All right, let's get to the lead debate of the day. Now, there are about 23 cases of Omicron uh, so far in India and perhaps counting. But most experts say that keeping a global count or a daily count of Omicron cases doesn't really help. Uh, meanwhile, fears seem to be easing, at least in the last 24 hours, with a lot of voices, including Fauci, saying that it may not be that severe. All that is well and good. But the big question really now facing policy makers is one of vaccinations. Should we give the limited vaccines that we have, and they are still relatively limited, to cover everyone, including people in other countries who don't have access? Or should we focus and prioritize on giving booster doses or additional doses to those who are vulnerable and who need it? Uh, to get perspective on this uh, very crucial policy issue, I'm joined now by Dr. J.A. Jayalal. He's the national president of the Indian Medical Association that has recently called for the inoculation of children between 12 to 18. This is still not done in India. It started in many parts of the world. In fact, children above the age of five are now getting COVID-19 vaccines. Dr. Chandrakant Laharia is joining us on the show, epidemiologist. I'm also speaking with Dr. Shashank Joshi, who is a member of the Maharashtra COVID Task Force. Maharashtra today has written to the center uh, saying that they would like to give booster do doses to healthcare workers and those who are immunocompromised. And Dr. Sunila Garg also joins us on the show. Welcome to all of you and thank you so much for speaking with us today. Dr. Jalal, I want to get your view first on the statement that the IMA has put out where you're warning of a bump up in numbers if um, their uh, you know measures are not taken to contain this new variant we, in early days so far and so far everything seems good and we really don't know how it will pan out but on the basic question of boosters or additional doses do you think it's time to start that now in india Boys. Jalal, can you hear me? Yeah, please. See, uh, the need for the booster dose, which we have uh, demanded at this moment, after satisfying that India has crossed nearly 85,000, 85 percentage of our population has got the single dose, and more than 50 percentage of our population has got the both the dose. And now, when we are limping back to normal period, and we were not demanding this because we the hope that. The third wave implementation of the third wave, the implications will be less. But with the new Omicron introduction or the, uh, well, the uh, news which you are getting from the Western countries, the possibility of it's a higher transmissibility and the possibility it can infect a quite a larger people, then definitely that is a uh, sure the more and more people will be coming to the hospital. And at that time, the frequency and the load, viral load of exposure will be very high for the healthcare profile professional. We agree with that, the T cell immunity and the, the cellular immunity and the humoral immunity is sufficient enough to face up average infection. When the infection comes in a high frequency and in a large load, definitely that uh, doctor or the whoever is taking care needs an additional dose of vaccination to boost their immunity. So that is why we call it as a booster immunity. They have enough immunity to boost it. We need immunity. Otherwise, we may lose more than 2,000 people as we have lost in the second wave. But equally, it is important the people with the immunocompromised state, they may not have even a normal immunity. For them also, it is an additional dose is needed. That is just to additionate or inaugurate or initiate immunity for them. India has more than 27 to 28 crores of vaccine in the backlog. What has been produced by the Serum Institute, not that it will be able to be reached out. Equally, there is when 25 percentage of a vaccine is allotted to the private sector, there's only four percentage is used. The quite a large volume of the vaccine is now still hold up in the private sector. How much we need for the healthcare professionals and the frontline workers, hardly it is a three crores of vaccine. Out of this 78 crores, and the, if the government is willing to give on a okay. three crore, it is a fruitful exercise the government is doing. Hmm. So, so very clear point that you think that we have enough to at least uh, protect our healthcare workers and frontline workers and those who are severely uh, compromised. Dr. Laharia, uh, what is your view? And you know, this is this is in the Indian context. We're looking at 85% of the population covered with one dose. But when you listen to the World Health Organization, they're looking at it 
in a global view that you still have so many nations with very little coverage which could be the ground the breeding ground for the next big variant so what we need to remember that what proportion of population has received one shot or both shot or whether country has a uh, excess supply these are not the criteria to decide whether booster shot should be given or not what we know that booster shot has a specific purpose India should prepare and plan for booster shot, but right now it, there is not enough evidence to start administering booster shot to any population. World Health Organization has already uh, posted on their website that what are the key criteria. Of, of course, what we need to know before booster shot can be administered, a clear scientific evidence on uh, which are the population group which is reporting breakthrough infection, which are the setting where uh, in reinfections are happening or breakthrough infections are happening. Also, we need to know about the, whether the, there is sufficient evidence that a booster shot of particular vaccine works if we, effectively or not. But most important point is that in the current vaccination program, the purpose of vaccination drive is to prevent from severe disease, hospitalization and death. And what we know that though over a period of time with the current vaccines, the num amount of antibody decline, but the protection against this primary objective, severe disease, hospitalization, death does not decline even in the longer period. And this has come from all parts of the world. And another point to remember is that most of the countries which have started booster shot for whatever reason, they are giving a booster shot of a different vaccine platform than the vaccine which were used for primary immunization program. The vaccines which are being used in India, Covishield and Covaxin, there is not uh, no scientific data available that booster shot works. So there is a lot of things which need to be answered before booster shot can be started. So finally summarizing, I would say that this is the time the technical expert group and expert committee should identify the questions which need to be answered in order to arrive on the decision on booster shot. But Omicron or any other thing has not changed anything which compel and which pressurize anybody to put a booster shot, but definitely excess availability or a particular coverage is not the criteria to decide on booster shot. No, but do, do we know that for sure, that uh, an Omicron um, doesn't mean that we need a booster shot? Because remember, our healthcare workers and uh, our elderly have now been immunized more than six months ago. And if you look at this, now, now look at this, you know, one study found COVID shield to be 85% protective against moderate or severe disease, 63 against symptomatic infection, and that number was 50% for Covaxin. So, Dr. Joshi, let me come to you. Uh, do you think there is a case? Because at some point, you have to make a choice. Um, the egalitarian view is that first let everyone in the world get a vaccine and then you go into booster shots. But when it comes to a very, um, you know, specific kind of view for your city, your state, your family, then everyone wants whatever protection they can get, isn't it? There are two debates here. One is the scientific one and second one is for every person versus most people, most of the time. Based on a simple principle, most people, most of the time. But according to me, normally every human life matters. So if every human life matters, then obviously, scientifically speaking, there is data that a person who has received the primary immunization with two shots and has not mounted an immune response, which is moderate to severe immunocompromised state, is eligible for a booster and should be given. It's already there on the WHO's website for the last four months. Second thing is that there is sufficient evidence that healthcare workers and frontline workers who are dealing in an environment which is continuously exposed to a delta or a delta derivative and subsequently now to a small sporadic uh, nature of Omicron definitely will be dealing with all types of biohazards. They definitely are a priority group which should be included in the same. So as far as the science goes, there is no two ways about it that there is an additional dose needed for the healthcare workers, for the uh, uh, the frontline workers, as well as people who are having immunocompromised states. Beyond that, people who have passed, we know now most of these vaccines were early stage vaccines. After six months, the immune response has dropped down. Whatever platform you take, you yourself have said that Covaxin only has 50% coverage, which means 50% of coverage is not there. Then obviously the senior citizen category comes into that, comorbidities come into that. So if Supply is not an issue, and according to me, I am given to understand supply is not an issue. Giving a small thing, which Dr. Jailal is saying, 
and these numbers are small it's a targeted population which is going to take care of the frontline group like our police personnel our healthcare workers they are the ones who are taking care i think it is reasonable and people a small group which is moderately to severely immunocompromised can be spelled out and an additional dose can be administered also this whole concept of hybrid immunity and zero positivity has been scattered surveys they are not reproducible they have been done in june and july they have not been reproduced now we don't know we don't have a single survey in the published literature in the last two months obviously the delta wave is on the decline in some geographies of india but there is active virus in circulation today the cases are 6000 but in kerala in maharashtra in andhra pradesh in assam clearly these are the four geographic spots where there is still active virus and delta in circulation so i think it is reasonable to ensure that they are protected according to me every human life matters we want to have a zero covid death and zero severe disease we want to have vaccine equity and we want to ensure that everybody is given the vaccine simultaneously we also want to protect our healthcare force frontline force and all our people who are not able to mount a antibody response after the two doses are given that is scientific rational and if there is no issue and if dr jailal's mathematics from ima is correct that it is only a question of 3 crore doses i don't see there is a major challenge when the manufacturer like serum institute has gone on record to say today that they want to halt production because there are no orders from the government so how do we justify that mm exactly and you know today we are celebrating a milestone of 85 uh, uh you know percent of the population covered 129 crore doses but remember we did 100 crore doses on the 21st of october so in the last 6 to 7 weeks our progress has petered down now i'm not sure what those reasons are in some states people are not going in for their second dose everyone thought you know corona is over but this debate has been reignited because of the omicron so we're two versus one right now dr sunila garg which side are you on yeah uh, thank you so much i'll say that you know now uh, if i we will see a couple of days back since then you know our pace of vaccination has gone up and today you know we are talking about 128.76 crore doses but we should not forget that there are six states in our country you know where people have not received even first dose of vaccination so they are like you know about 80% and all where we have to immunize about 200% of the population so having said that you know we have to realize that in addition to the population which is remaining with the first and second dose of vaccine and day before also we had 16000 healthcare workers which were immunized for their second dose because of the complacency uh, there is still a lot of hesitancy amongst healthcare workers also so first of all we need to address that also simultaneously and we should not forget that we have got 14.5 crore children which are between 12 to 18 years of age where you know when we are going to phase down to those and those children also suffer from high chunk of you know obesity and you know comorbidities and all then should be there this thing you know they should get the opportunity because we do have a kind of a debate about you know whether to send the children to school or not so from a public health perspective i will say that it's a question of equity and equality let the you know everybody receive the second dose with our best possible efforts and then you know go towards the children and all and you know simultaneously then we can think of the healthcare workers but first our prior it should be to immunize and then you know primarily we have to think of that part that we are safe only when the world is safe so we have to talk of one world one health and we don't have to follow the example of developed countries where a lot of vaccine has got wasted and they are utilizing for giving third dose fourth dose today's omicron let's not forget that tomorrow the mutants may come that is important part so we'll say that okay give another so today if we immunize the healthcare workers with another dose so by the time another variant will come so we'll say about the fourth dose so we have to be very much convinced about you know giving the boosters so as of now i am not in favor of giving the boosters it is everybody should get immunized you know, with the two doses and we should still address the hesitancy which is there amongst the general right. population that is important All right, so we have two verses too. This is turning into an in, in, interesting debate. Let me get a rebuttal from Dr. Lahiria to the points that uh, Dr. Joshi and Dr. Jayalal made. They are talking about numbers. If you want to look at healthcare workers, frontline workers, immunocompromised, or the the elderly, those who really need it, and you know you could have criteria for that. 
the fact is that we seem to have enough doses right now. Why not protect them? What would be your response to that? The response is that what we need to remember that the benefit of primary immunization in preventing disease, severe disease, hospitalization and death is proven. But we do not even know for the vaccines which are being used in India that giving an additional booster dose will result in any improved benefit. So there is no scientific evidence and in a scientific and public health program, we have to go by the evidence. But is there any study which show that giving a booster shot results in better protection for the vaccines being used in India? The only evidence available is for mRNA-based vaccine in USA, and that's where they are being used. So I would not say that we should use a vaccine without knowing whether it benefits or not. It's not necessary. That's one part. Second part is yes. What is true that uh, the some of the immunocompromised individuals who require additional dose as part of primary immunization program, which is very different from booster dose, the additional dose need to be given at the regular interval, third dose, which is being called. While to call it a booster, it need to be given at the gap of six months. But again, the evidence is that, that if we give a third additional dose of a mRNA-based vaccine, it results in increased antibody. But that kind of evidence is not available for Indian vaccines, which are being used in India. So there is no benefit. <laughs> Coming to the last part, what we need to remember, the administering the dose to the primary, uh, to the uh, for the first uh, shot and second shot will result in improved protection for individuals. But or if there are additional doses, administering those doses to the population which are unvaccinated will help in preventing the future emergence of variant. Otherwise, countries can giving boost, keep giving booster dose. It is going to be a never-ending cycle where a variant is going to keep emerging from partially or unvaccinated population, and they would be following the approach of third boost, third, uh, first booster, second. Let me quickly get. Booster. Let me quickly get a rebuttal. Vaccine. Let me quickly get a rebuttal from Dr. Joshi. What? One minute. Let, let's just keep it moving quickly, Dr. Joshi. Yeah, if you can yeah, respond yeah, to yeah, that, there is no data to evidence. show that a booster slash additional dose will help, especially not for the vaccines we have. Yes. So clearly, the job of generating evidence is also the onus lies with the government because everything is centralized. Every human life matters. Public health experts will consider equality, quantity. I'm not debating that at all. If, and when we are the vaccine pharmacy of the world, and when we have such high science agencies who can do such excellent serial surveys, I'm certain that they have generated sufficient evidence. It's not in public domain for the mix and match strategy. There were studies done in CMC Valor. There has been some scattered output of those studies. It is the job of the research agencies and science agencies to generate that evidence and by now the evidence should have been available because we know that this problem was going to occur. Number two, there is reasonable scientific data to suggest that somebody who is a healthcare worker who has taken a vaccine in Jan and February, by now his antibodies are waned. There is an, an, you know enough data to suggest that his T cell immunity will have be waned. So the point is that this is not a rocket science. Every human life in the healthcare frontline work matters. And public health experts will always say most of the time, most of the people. But as far as individuals are concerned, and we are talking of a small segment, whether it is immunocompromised or not, anybody who cannot mount an immune response, whether it is T or B cell, study it in a sample set of uh, 50 or 100 people. You will know dood ka dood, pani ka pani. But I don't think that is going to be a way to do it. If there is sufficient stock available, do it simultaneously. Do it with a compassionate uh, ground. And I think it is not an unfair plea to ensure that you protect and the way they started, I'm very confident that the government of India will come out with an additional dose program, as well as a program for healthcare and frontline workers, as well as for children. Because when we have a stock, I don't see the reason for that hesitancy. If it is lack of data or science, or if they are questioning the credibility of Indian vaccines, it's a cause of concern. So I don't think that is the issue. I think the issue primarily is that we need to ensure that we need to protect a small segment which is medically and scientifically indicated, which is one which has high exposure and or has a compromised immune state. And that is where the science stands all over the world. And I stand to be corrected if the science is not generated. I'm certain it is there somewhere. It needs to be ensured that the right authorities have a look okay. at it. Okay. Okay, Dr. Garg, why don't you come in on, that, on this? And let me add another dimension to this debate. If there is no need, there is no evidence, then why are so many nations around the world, the United States, Europe, um, UAE, giving booster shots? I mean, is it as simplistic as saying that they just care about themselves and that's why they're doing it? Clearly, it's backed with some science. 
I think uh, I, we need to also look at the data today. Maximum number of infections are coming from USA, UK, Russia, France, and all the, those countries are having maximum number of infections despite giving the boosters. So there is something more which is underlying it. You see compromising of COVID appropriate behavior. This, you know, you may get a false sense of security also. That is one thing which we need to take into consideration. Definitely point of Dr. Chandrakant and Dr. You know, when I was looking at Dr. Shishank also, the points are very valid. But today I am looking at, you know, not 24 uh, crore doses. I am looking at overall, you know, doses which are 60 crores, which is which are remaining doses, and also 14.5 crore into two. That means I'm, I have only taken into consideration children who are, you know, around that years of age. But looking at the concept of, you know, the developed countries, I will say that's a kind of a selfish motive without any much of evidence. You see, then if those countries have given boosters, where are they now? If USA has given, you know, 50% of the population the immunization and they've started, you know, giving boosters again, you know, without looking at the rest of the population, then still they are one of the highest five countries which is having maximum number of infections. So that is where I think we need to talk far beyond only the vaccination. We have to stress upon COVID appropriate behavior. That is the first most important public health angle. And we need to talk about, you of know, course. the strategies. Of course. No, no, I'm sure. I, I'm I'm restricting I'm restricting the conversation to booster versus vaccine yes. equity because uh, COVID appropriate behavior goes without saying. We all now need to remember once again to mask up. I will give the last word to Dr. Jalal who started off the debate. Uh, you know what um, yeah, final not. point would you make to this debate, which has been well argued on both sides? Cover everyone first if we don't want the next variant is the simple point when it comes to vaccine equity. No, there is no question in our ideas and our mission that everyone in this country should get the first dose and possibly the second dose. The question here comes is when you have a vaccine, when you have the science, there is the evidence-based science is available. It is unfortunate that people in the government is not saying that there is no evidence, but if there is enough evidence is available, giving an additional dose is going to booster and enhance your immunity. Here, there's a two set of people. One set of people, which they are going to get exposed to the volume of dose and frequency of dose. These two are the great indication in any immunological study. The need for booster dose is based on this frequency and load. And that is definitely the medical profession is going to get exposed. Second is the people who are immunocompromised. And in the setup, we are talking about equity unnecessarily. Do not talk philosophically equity. When the country was suffering with COVID, you are not talking about equity in sharing the oxygen. You are not talking about equity in sharing the beds. You are not talking about equity in sharing the doctors in the rural areas. But now when the vaccine comes and you are sitting on an iron rod and you are saying that because of the equity, we will not give to their doctors. We will not give to the healthcare workers. And the healthcare workers on the front line, they are working. 2,000 of our doctors has died. And in spite of that, if the government says, and we will not support the doctors, there is a very pathetic situation the country is going to face. And we are very sorry to note that when in the name of science, in the name of uh, there is uh, uh, muted uh, uh, data, and you are just holding that uh, the vaccine, but you have already given the company to export the vaccine to other country. I'm saying, not saying, I mean, wrong. But yes. please, Dr. Jala, your, your yes. views are well received, but I, I don't think a decision has been made no. yet. As, as I understand it, a decision has not been arrived at yet. There was a meeting of the entire and training, they have to decide it is, it is all this. But, you know, your, view is, uh, your, your, your point of view is well taken. Yes. So you're saying protect the frontline workers. Don't, uh, you know, make them vulnerable. And remember, our entire process of vaccination started with protecting the frontline workers. They were the first to receive the dose, not the elderly, like in so many other countries. So definitely a lot to mull over. I want to thank all of you for joining us.